Hello, so this is our strategic analysis on the company Delta. Um, this analysis was put together by me, Leah, um, with Kirsten, Braden, Ethan, and Logan. So starting out our analysis, um, I'm going to be going into our executive summary, which is our team has put together a thorough strategic analysis for Delta. Our analysis includes an in-depth look into the company's competitive advantages, disadvantages, and overall direction. We have also included our honest assessment of what Delta should do going forward. Delta's top competitors are Southwest and American Airlines. Uh, these companies offer more affordable flying options that attract customers through their cheaper airfare. Uh, this makes it difficult for Delta to compete as they would have to limit their quality of their services to lower their prices. Our strategy is to compete with increased quality to continue driving traffic to Delta regardless of the high price point. We propose that this is met through the establishment of EcoSky Lab, increased customer satisfaction through transparency and service, and lastly, a modernization of the fleet and routes. In making these changes, Delta will maintain its stellar reputation and continue being the number one competitor in the airline industry. Next, we will be going over what resources um, Delta Airlines has. Hey, this is Kirsten, and I'm gonna share about Delta's situation analysis. So first, what resources does Delta have? Well, great question, let's take a look. From our external and internal analysis, we discovered that Delta has the following resources. Fleet, the size and efficiency of the aircrafts can provide advantages like operational flexibility and cost efficiency. Route network, Delta has an extensive route network which, is allow which allows them to get customers from point A to point B. Brand competitiveness. Delta offers rewards and elite status benefits that can incentivize customers to choose Delta over other competitors. Strategic partnerships. This really helps them with their competition. Human capital. Operational efficiency. Delta focuses on operational efficiency to minimize costs and maximize revenue. And lastly, customer service. As part of our analysis, we looked at Delta's resources in the VRO model, which stands for value, rare, int imitate cost, and organization. We determined that the majority of Delta's resources would respond a yes to the VRO model, except for two. First is fleet. Fleet would require a lot of costs to imitate. In fact, Delta has over 800 aircraft, which is a lot. It would be really hard to build up. The second is customer service. We put a no for the rare section of the VRO model because many competitors and other airlines have customer service and loyalty programs. So it's really not rare to Delta. We then studied the five forces model and rated each with the level of competition. The first is rivalry among com competing sellers, in which we decided that there's a medium sense of competition within the airline industry. In fact, the primary job of an airline is to safely and comfortably move the passenger from one plane to another, which depends more on the timing of the route that fits the customer's needs. The second is the threat of entrance, in which we rated low. We rated this low because starting an airline is not a simple task. In fact, there are only 800 active airlines in the world, which that includes major regional and cargo airlines. The third is supplier bargaining power. We rated this high because there are not a lot of other airline suppliers, so they have lots of bargaining power. If an airline needs a, a part or supply, they're going to pay for it. The fourth is buyer's bargaining power. We rated this as high because if airlines don't mean meet FAA regulatory standards, customers won't feel comfortable using them. And fifth is firms offering substitutes. 
This we rated moderate because the threat of substitutes within the airline industry isn't super likely. Replace, replacing airfare itself would be difficult for many, but it does have the possibility of happening in the right situation. Next, we'll get to hear from Braden on the strategic assessment. Thank you, Kirsten. So now let's jump into our strategic assessment. To begin, we first looked at the five uh, strategies that are available, and we feel like the, that Delta offers the best cost provider strategy. And some of the reasons why we think that they fall and in, in, employ that strategy is they offer a more premium yet affordable airline. In the airline space, there's a lot of airlines that offer absolute budget, like low cost provider strategies. And they have they definitely have their niche, but Delta's interesting is because they offer affordable but luxury um, to a degree flights. Um, an additional thing, as pointed out earlier, is the customer service is exceptional. Um, they pride themselves on having the Sky Team, which uh, is kind of like their customer care promise to make sure that everything goes according to plan for their customers' flights. And then they also have options to appeal to customers who are wanting a little bit more luxurious experience without booking on a luxury airline, such as um, unique seats and things of that nature, which I'll dive into a little bit more here in a second. Um, so some of the factors we've identified that really help them to deliver on that is, as mentioned earlier, their loyalty clubs. Um, Delta offers and repeat trips um, with their various loyalty plans, including um, a medallion stat or status that people can earn, um, fl frequent flyer miles, and then you get additional perks once you re as you fly more often. Another thing that they're exceptional at is their route networking. Um, throughout m many domestic flights, you can usually get a direct flight on a Delta flight, um, either through their partnerships with other airlines such as uh, SkyWest or just through main Delta flights. Another thing is, as I mentioned earlier, they, they appeal to a broad market. They appeal to more pedestrian travelers with just their economy and main cabin seating, but they also offer Priority Plus or um, Comfort Plus seats in addition to their business and first class seats. So as you can see on their flight, they can appeal to many different um, customer groups with a single airline. So now kind of pivoting towards maybe some of their more powerful competitors. Um, the first one we identified is Southwest. Southwest operates a kind of a low cost strategy. Um, in a way, they, they've cut back a lot of features that Delta offers such as seat selection um, or seat upgrades. And as a result, um, the, they have a much lower ticket price. Another interesting thing Southwest does is they have a uniform fleet type. They only have one single type of airplane. And so that makes maintenance on it much easier because they only have to stock parts and train technicians that operate in one particular plane. Additional thing that they do that makes them um, be able to offer such a low cost is their boarding strategy. Um, they don't have assigned seating. And so guests are able to board quicker, flights could take off sooner, and then they can reduce the cost of um, essentially idling the plane at the gate. Another uh, interesting competitor is American Airlines. American Airlines does use the same strategy as Delta. However, they seem to be executing on a lower level. Examples are customer service. Customer service for American Airlines is consistently ranking very low. Um, although they make efforts to improve that, they haven't been um, successfully seen in the public's eye and their brand perception still seems low. Another thing that they ran into is their fleet age. Delta has been able to continually upgrade their fleet. And so on a rolling basis, they're introducing new planes, whereas uh, American Airlines has seemed to more periodically update their fleet. And as a result, some of their planes are lacking features that the newer planes have, such as charging in seats or monitors in the back of seats. Another thing they've ran into is some labor issues, just with pilots and also flight crews. Um, an interesting thing Delta has, or at least they had, was a talent agency. Um, and that kind of helped them to leverage their laboring or their labor. Um, 
American Airlines doesn't have that, and it has been a bit of an issue in the past. Another thing is their oil dependence. Um, and this affects the, all airlines as a whole, but when it's coupled with an aging fleet um, that doesn't get the best efficiency, it can really add up and cause them to be spending more and be more at the mercy of oil prices. Delta's response is they've established what's called the Eco Sky Lab. And this is more to help set them apart in oil dependency, um, something that, as I just pointed out, American Airlines struggles with. But their Eco Sky Lab is a, a kind of a laboratory that helps them find ways to get more mileage out of their planes and be more carbon friendly, um, which is really big in the public's eye as well. Another thing is their customer service is constantly being boosted through their transparency. Um, as Kirsten said earlier, other airlines do have exceptional customer service as well, but Delta is keeping up with them and also leading in some ways just due to their transparency and helping and making sure that their guests have a great um, experience every time they fly. Another example is their modernization of their fleet and their routes. They are constantly evaluating potential new routes um, which would help if the customer base will fly there to help save money um, instead of routing them through um, layovers and things of that nature. And also having a modern fleet makes it so customers are more inclined to want to fly with them for just the amenities alone. And an additional great thing they've been doing is shedding their debt. As I mentioned, they've been um, buying uh, airplanes frequently and as a result, they're able to price them accordingly to manage their debt so they're not overextended. So now I'm going to turn it over to some of our proposed recommendations. Thanks so much. Hi, my name is Ethan Brown, and I'll be going over the proposed recommendations for Delta Airlines. So in our executive summary here at the top, we went over about currently how Delta stands within the market of commercial airlines, what their current business strategy is, also using the five, the five forces model and see where they currently are at. And, we'll, and in turn, we'll be able to give our recommendations on how Delta Airlines is able to best move forward to continue to remain accessible and improve on their current services. So the current strategy that Delta Airlines has is currently working. It does offer premium services, and they're able to carve out. They're, they're able to carve out their own industry slice of being the commercial airline that people are associated with great premium service. Now, in turn, they are able to accomplish it in three different ways in comparison to the competitors, in a very specific way. One with a loyalty club, and they're able to continue to garnish that customer satisfaction and continued renewal of using the services, very impressive route networking. They were able to use their airlines with other communications of other airlines and be able to get their clients the best type of route possible and a broad market to be able to apply that in. So their current market, their current strategy is working, but as it is a common saying in business, you're either growing or you're dying. If you're stagnant in the current field or market that you're in, you will find that you will slowly really start to slip away. So these are the recommendations we want to give that Delta Airline is able to improve on their services. So how they can improve on their already great business strategy. Eco Skylab. This is a industry innovation to have net zero emission by 2050. Now, it's a long way away. It's about 26 years in the future, but it is a very large, sustainable, goal that will allow investors and in turn environmental friendly to be able to see that this is a going industry that will be able to stay relevant for the long while and be able to stay ahead of the curve in terms of in terms of energy renewal and emission strategies modernization this is a ongoing a true ongoing concern because there's always ways to improve your standard of fleets and routes but it's important that Delta has already made their identity and their current business strategy as being premium. So they should continue to improve upon their standard, standard fleets and routes as being the headliner for that. So people are aware and that their customer and that they're able to deliver on that said 
quality service. Lastly is the customer satisfaction. It is just continue to improving on transparency on service that they provide to their clients. Simple, straightforward, but it's the one that people are aware that Delta is able to perform. So those are three things that we uh, that we have seen that they, they can already do well and above to improve their already great business strategy and be able to do that with. And so that's what I and so that's what we say for being able to help improve for the proposed recommendations to give to Delta Airlines for their current business strategy. Okay, so to wrap things up, we wanted to discuss uh, why we believe our recommendations that we've made for Delta's strategy moving forward are so important and also maybe point out some of the potential consequences if they fail to apply our suggestions and evolve their strategy for the future. Um, I'd like to direct your attention to this data chart that we have attached here to the slide. Um, this chart shows market share in revenue dollars from the past year. Um, and it points out exactly what we've been talking about in our presentation. Delta is um, at the top of the airline industry um, for all the reasons that we've mentioned because of their strategy um, and how well it has worked up to this point. Um, but the margin is very narrow. Um, you can see here that uh, American Airlines and Southwest Airlines are just a little over um, 0.5 of a percent behind. Um, and we believe that this is why it's so important that Delta applies our suggestions, because if they fail to evolve their strategy um, and make changes in the marketplace, then Delta's direct competitors would have opportunity to then come in um, in the future and steal some of that market share back and Delta could lose its, its stronghold in first place. And then moving on to our next slide, um, I wanted to just revisit the suggestions we made and provide specific examples of how if Delta failed to apply that specific suggestion that it could be an opportunity for a competitor to um, take over that aspect of what makes Delta so great. So number one, if Delta chooses not to make an eco-friendly effort to reduce emissions as we have suggested, it could hurt Delta's brand image and Delta could lose loyalty from customers who are environmentally minded and who hold and place a high value on the clean environment and these things that are so important. Um, so say Delta fails to apply this suggestion, but a competitor doesn't um, and makes strides in trying to reduce emissions, then Delta could lose those customers to one of its competitors. Number two, if Delta fails to modernize its fleet and routing, it could lose its identity as a premium airline. So again, going back to the example of its direct competitors, if Delta failed to modernize its planes, its fleet, and the routes that it services, but Southwest didn't, say Southwest added a bunch of really cool new features to its plane, um, then that would take over Delta's reputation as the premium airline, the premium flight experience, and Southwest would be able to snatch up those customers who value um, the premium service that Delta provides. So it's essential that Delta continues to modernize its planes, the features it provides, its routes that it services um, for that purpose. And then last but not least, Delta's customer service is known to be exceptional. If they don't continue to evolve and adapt to a changing demographic, this key piece of their identity could be overtaken by competitors. So again, as the times change, um, so do people. And it's crucial for Delta's customer service to adapt to the changing demographic and be able to serve customers who... Um, maybe it hasn't in previous generations. If Delta fails to do that, but one of its competitors does, again, that's another opportunity for Delta's competitors to take over some of that market share that Delta has such a stronghold on. Um, 
And so that is why we think it's so important that Delta applies these suggestions that we've made um, to continue to be at the top of the industry and the top of the marketplace. Thanks.